Hey everybody, welcome to my channel or welcome back. This is a video that I never wanted to have to make. I had to cancel my surgery. I got COVID-19 as well as my husband. We both started getting symptoms on the 18th of August. I don't have any videos, so I'm just gonna show some pictures that I took throughout the process. Um, went to urgent care on the 20th. Both of us got tested. Both of us tested positive. I got my results back the next day. He got his back on Sunday the 22nd. Um, had a follow-up appointment with urgent care on that Monday. They suggested that I get one of these, a pulse oximeter that monitors your oxygen level in your blood. They said if it falls below 94 that I need to be concerned and go to the ER. So I monitored it um, Friday the 27th, still wasn't getting better, called, made another urgent care appointment for the 30th. Um, they said due to my oxygen levels being low that I needed to go immediately to the ER. So I spent the 30th and the 31st in the ER. There were no beds up in the regular part of the hospital, so I had to stay in the emergency room. Um, my blood oxygen levels would fall every time that I stood up or moved around. My heart rate would shoot through the roof. Um, it would be like anywhere from 150 to 170, and a normal range is 60 to 100 for an adult. This is at night with my camera in the ER. There was a guy outside my room, scared the crap out of me, screaming bloody murder that someone was trying to kill him. Um, they eventually tackled him to the ground outside my room and uh, restrained him. So that was exciting. I just <laughs> remember sitting there feeling like, oh my gosh, I just want to walk out of here and go home. If I die, I die. You know, I was scared to death. I was by myself. Um, this you can see is my monitor that they were monitoring me while I was there. My oxygen level was at 88 at this point. They had me on oxygen therapy. They gave me steroids through my IV. And they also gave me a Z-Pack, a liquid form through my IV. They did not do fluids while I was in the hospital. Um, they said that their protocol with COVID is not to give fluids. So um, I kept texting with my daughter's boyfriend's mom, who's a nurse, because I was scared to death. I just kept thinking to myself, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. They're going to put me on a ventilator and I'm going to die alone in a hospital by myself. Um, I had a nurse that was not too friendly because I was not vaccinated. Um, which did not help. She uh, helped to increase my fear and stress level. So I kept taking pictures of the oxygen levels and sending it to her, um, my daughter's boyfriend's mom, to have her look at it and say, oh my gosh, is this okay? Am I going to die? Am I going to be fine? You know, what's going on? They're not telling me anything. You know, I was scared to death while I was in there. Um, they gave me magnesium while I was in there. One of my blood tests came back that my magnesium level was low. They did a chest x-ray and they did a CT scan of my lungs. This was in my room in the ER. It's the most bizarre clock I've ever seen in my life. I'm sure if you're in the medical industry, you know what it's for, but I thought it was bizarre and I hated it, so I took a picture of it. The e evening of Tuesday, August 31st, they finally had a room that opened up upstairs in the regular part of the hospital, so I got moved up there. This was the view from my bed. I actually had a window, which was awesome. Um, had fabulous nursing staff while I was up in the normal part of the hospital. Um, they constantly communicated with me, were super friendly, super nice. Um, this is my breakfast the one day. 
they had a system where you call the cafeteria, order what you want, and they bring it up to your room within 30 minutes. So you could order whatever you want and could eat whenever you want. Um, this is the board where they let me know who my nurses and everything were for the day. And you can see that my only concern while I was in there was when do I get to go home? <laughs> because that's all I wanted to know. Every time the nurses would come in, they'd have to gown up in their little hazmat gear, um, face shield and everything since I was COVID positive. Um, I got to use the little incentive spirometer that I'm sure some of you who've already had the VSG have used. Um, having COVID and uh, the COVID causing pneumonia in my lungs, it was very difficult to get the thing to move very far at all. Um, this was the view out of my room during the day. Uh, another meal here. The only part that sucked about this was at this point, my smell and taste were completely gone. Um, they were giving me steroids though, so my hunger was like ridiculous. Every time that they brought my food, I would literally inhale it even though I couldn't taste it. Um, I was just felt like I was starving. I had went two weeks without eating anything. I had actually lost 13 pounds since I had gotten COVID before I went to the hospital. The only thing that I could eat while I was sick for the first two weeks was my protein shakes. And thank God that I had a stock load of those in the house, um, different flavors to try and stuff like that. Um, so that I didn't die of starvation. When you have no taste and smell and you don't feel good, the last thing that you want to do is eat. Throughout my stay at the hospital, I was on oxygen. Um, they did steroids every day that I was there, and they also did, I believe it was three days of antibiotics. The night before I went home, they had a local oxygen supply company, a uh, medical equipment company, contact my husband so that they could come by and set up an oxygen concentrator in our home. So this is how I found out that I was going to get to go home, um, that they set this up at our house. This is Jack sniffing it and probably getting ready to pee on it, something new and strange in the house. So once I was discharged from the hospital, I got to go home on Thursday morning, uh, September 2nd, and I had to be on oxygen 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can see the green cord that comes off of this. That's my oxygen supply line that connects to the cannula, all the nice medical terms that I'm learning. That's the little part that goes on your face and goes up your nose to supply the oxygen to you. So um, today is... October 21st, Thursday, and I'm almost nine weeks out from when I got my first symptoms of COVID, and I am still on oxygen. So I just wanted to post this so that everybody could see um, what happens with COVID. It is definitely something that attacks morbidly obese people and people with asthma. I personally was scared to get the vaccine. I didn't know what it would do to my body. And being so close to having my surgery, I didn't want to screw anything up or get COVID from the vaccine. I don't think that that's possible, but your brain thinks weird things. Um, so I wish I would have gotten the vaccine. Now, when I want to go anywhere outside the house, I have to take along my little buddy here. Um, and I have to get new canisters from the supply place. I keep four at the house. Each one lasts about four hours, so I can't be gone away from the house for very long. Um, if I drive somewhere, like to a doctor's appointment, I have to put it in the car with me and then connect myself to the oxygen. But not fun at all, but I am so grateful to be alive. This is my new morning routine. 
and I pray while I'm taking each and every one of these. The two bears up at the top are Sugar Bear uh, Hair, Skin, and Nails. The little red pill is a Sudafed for decongesting me. Um, the little one to the right, the peachy, orangey color is uh, Prevacid. And then I have Zinc, Vitamin C, my multivitamin. The little darker yellow pill is a cough pill. And then I have CoQ10 which helps your heart function. And I have krill oil, which helps with cholesterol. I have two of the little clear ones there. That's D3. I have my birth control pill. I have a baby aspirin because uh, heart, uh, heart issues run in my family. And then um, there is potassium and my blood pressure medicine, Losartan. And then a supplement called NAC that's supposed to help improve pulmonary function. So those take me about an hour to get everything down in the morning. Um, I take them a little bit at a time and I take them and then I sit for 20 minutes and do a breathing treatment. This is my nighttime routine, so more pills at night. The two large bright yellow gold ones are turmeric, which is a supplement which is supposed to help with inflammation in the body. Um, there is also my atorvastatin, which is my cholesterol lowering medication. The other little white one is Zyrtec, or allergies, so it's an antihistamine. The little square brownish looking one is Singular, which is an asthma medication. Um, the little tan one at the top is my iron supplement. The only thing that's not pictured in my medication pictures is my new asthma inhaler um, that the pulmonologist put me on. So this is my new inhaler called Brio. It's a dual acting medicine. It has a steroid and then whatever the long acting beta 2 adrenaline, I can't even pronounce it. Um, it's kind of like your rescue inhaler, but it's prolonged so it keeps your airways open longer. So I do this once every morning, um, usually after my breathing treatment. So my surgery was originally scheduled for September 15th. I actually got a call while I was in the hospital to schedule my appointment to come to do with the tour of the hospital and do my prep work for my surgery and had to let them know that I had canceled it with the surgeon. Um, so that was scheduled for September 15th. So then I rescheduled it for November 8th. And unfortunately, to date, I am still on oxygen and not comfortable having the surgery done while I'm still recovering. So it has been postponed again. We did have to resubmit to my insurance and had to request an extension. The insurance did grant my extension. They extended the approval until February 9th. So my surgery is currently scheduled for January 26th. So I'm praying that everything is all healed and I am all better so that I can have my surgery done in January. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for stopping by and for continuing to be a part of my journey. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. I'd love to have you along for my journey. Don't forget to hit the like button. And also, please don't forget to comment. I love reading you guys' comments and knowing that I'm not alone in this journey. See you soon.